What's up, YouTube? This episode is sponsored by Faded Luxury Barber Lounge, located on the south side of Atlanta, Georgia. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Faded Luxury Barber Lounge. Now let's get into this episode. What's up, Bully Roll? It's going down today. I got the one and only uh, Mr. <laughs> Double Muscle Lion Bullies himself in the building. Man, I appreciate having you, bro. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate you guys having me. Um, it's always a pleasure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got a few questions for you, man. Like, how, how long have you been breeding, man? I've been breeding um, since really, like, since 2012. You know? 2012. And just, yeah, so, um, yeah, since, like, 2012 is really when I got into the game, and um, I've just been a student to it ever since, you know? <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So what do you what do you um love about breeding? What do you what do you love about it? Um for me, and, and I guess that's what you know makes people gravitate towards me is I really I, I appreciate the science of the dog breeding. You know, I really appreciate the genetics, being able to take two dogs together, take two dogs and and you know try to create something new out of it. Um yeah, like I said, I I, I love the entire scientific part of it that that's all me that, that's what i do you know i love it pretty much the whole art the whole art of it the whole art yeah. of the breathing yeah yeah that's pretty much up, you know that's what i like, hey I've, I've been following you for a while on youtube man and you 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 seem like you know what you're talking about man i hey, appreciate it it, man. it is obvious you love doing what you do especially if you you know this is your full-time job now yeah. So how, yes. does, how, does, how does that how does that work? How does how you know breeders that that would love to go in and do it uh, full time? Like, what would you say to them in order to to do that? Um. So, like, what I would tell people is, if if you wanted to become a breeder full time, um, and, and I kind of did a little bit of an episode talking about this, but really, um, multiple streams of income, in my opinion, um, you do get those rare unicorn type scenarios where people solely make money off of just their dogs just off of individual breedings but it you know it it can get tricky because you're dealing with dogs and what if breedings don't take and things like that so that's where um creating multiple streams of income where we do you know progesterone testing reproductive services um you know, we sell products. Um, we have a, a course, you know, that we're uh, establishing this year, opening up a pet store. I mean, Man, the that's what's on, you know, yeah. So like, well, that's, and, and like I said, when we just started, it was literally just doing um, like AIs and stuff like that. Things that we would already be doing for our own dogs. Puppy shots is another simple one. Um, and we just started doing it for other people, other breeders. And um, it allowed us to we didn't have to pump out as many litters, you know, um, we could keep a nice small amount of litters and, um, you know, also not be forced to have to sell, you know, cause we're creating our own bloodline. And I mean, you know, that the key thing is being able to keep dogs, you know, when you're creating your own bloodline. Man, that's, that's, that's what's up, man. And then, and I, um, I would really like what y'all have going, man. And that's, that's dope. I think that's really dope, man. You know, a lot of people are scared to kind of step out, you know, and, you know, and just do what they love doing, you know, and you yeah, actually doing yeah. what you love doing. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, like I said, I mean, in some to answer your question, like I said, the, the, the key thing is, is really just like I said, multiple streams of income, everybody has their own individual talents. So if you can bring those talents um, to the dog breeding game, um, that will set you apart as well as, um, like I said, that may be the little, you know, little extra piece that you may need in order to separate yourself from everybody else in the dog breeding game. And ultimately, Hey, you know, that, that might be able to be, uh, allow you to, um, you know, do this full time. You know? Absolutely. Now, what's some of the obstacles that you had to, um, to overcome or may have faced with, uh, making this solely your, uh, your full time, your full time nine to five. Um, I would say some of the obstacles, like, for example, is like, we, we're in New York. So it's like, probably like one of the most, ex it's up there as far as expensive place to, places to live. So Absolutely. Just the, yeah. So just the fear of, uh, like one of the biggest obstacles was just making enough and consistently, you know, um, it, it, it was more mental and psychological than anything else. Um, okay. Kind of 
yeah, kind of like underestimating my own skills and talents. And I say this to everyone else too. I mean, everyone has their own skills and talents and sometimes we underestimate ourselves and what we're capable of. Absolutely. And, um, I think that's really the biggest thing is, is, is gaining that confidence to say, you know what, I'm going to take the leap and, and do it full time. Um, and like I said, once I did that, um, I, I was able to make more money than I was at my nine to five, you know? So, um, it was the best decision I ever made, but, um, I, it was, I think I could have done it sooner, but yet again, I think it was all psychological. I, I, I felt like I had to be at that job, stay at that job, you know, for security. Man, absolutely. Absolutely. And I see you guys have created you uh, your own bloodline. You know, how, how long did it take you to, uh, to do that? Um, so, I mean, the bloodline I inherited actually from my mentor. So he was already about, I think, seven or eight generations in. Okay. So, yeah. So I came in um, around maybe the sixth generation, the fifth generation. And we started collaborating lightly. And then I picked it up from there. And I would say we're at, oh, man, at, at least for this particular bloodline, the Angry Toy Bulls, I was breeding other dogs. I was breeding um, standard extreme dogs um, when I first got into this. Um, then it went to Pockets. And then it went to the Exotics. I, I particularly breed Exotics. As far as our Exotic Angry Toy Bull bloodline, I believe it's in like four generations. Okay. Okay. So now with the exotics, what do you, what do you love about the exotics? Oh, um, I can't even ask you what do you like about the exotics. <laughs> what do you, what do you love about the exotics? Yeah, um, when it comes to the exotics, it's 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 a lot of things. I love the challenge because it's definitely a challenging breed. You know, um, we deal with a lot of um, circumstances and problems that a lot of other breeds don't come across. But some people, you know to me it just makes me stronger it just makes me a better breeder okay know? um as well as um like i said it's something new and that's what i really love about it as well it, it's it's something new it's something different um and what i loved what what got me into this breed initially it's similar with the exotic because of the fact that i love the extreme standards big you know big heads you know crazy bone girthy okay. bodies so what I loved is that I could have that on a miniature frame, you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the better question to ask is what I don't like about the breed, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so now when it comes to, just saying when a dog is pregnant and uh, when it comes to okay. doing the reverse uh, progesterones, even before you do the, uh, the breeding with the regular yeah. progesterone, like, okay. how does that, like, how does it even go hand in hand? The way you break the numbers down, man, it's like, this, <laughs> it's a science, it's crazy. Could you let the people know? Yeah, like yeah. So, so um, just to like backtrack to even to the, the question prior, if you can, in my opinion, if you can breed exotic bullies and you can breed them correctly, in my opinion, you could breed pretty much any breed um, because of the fact of, like I said, the things that we have to deal with, like, I didn't really get into the, the progesterone testing until we switched over to like the exotic, more exotic type breeds. Um, but, well, the exotic bully, I'm sorry. Um, so a lot of other breeds, like I talked to poodle breeders, I talked to chow chow breeders. They're just now, a lot of them are just now kind of learning about progesterone testing and things okay. like that, you know? Okay. So it's like, um, like I said, there's, there's a, a large learning curve, but like I said, when it comes to the exotic bully, we, we do a lot more extra stuff than these other breeds really, um, they don't have to do. So anyway, when it comes to, I'll answer your question about the progesterone testing. Um, essentially, when it comes to the numbers with progesterone testing, you just want to know, uh, progesterone testing is just going to tell you when she's ready to be bred. So I try to tell people, um, based off of who's doing the progesterone testing for you, um, it's like Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, there's different machines and they're going to give you different numbers. So if you have your own machine, that's an IDEX and I have my own machine, that's a, uh, a Menivitis, they're both doing the same thing, which is telling us when she's going to be ready to be bred, but okay. you're going to get complete, completely different numbers than I am. And that's because there's no like, uh, federal or government like there, there's no set um numbers that we all have to go by if i created my own progesterone machine today 
my numbers could be whatever I want them to be. And they would be completely different from maybe your machine. So that's kind of the problem is that different companies come out with different machines and they cut, they go off of different numbers. So, okay. Yeah. So I use like the scenario of like, if you had a machine and I had a machine, it would be like uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. So I believe, don't quote me on it. I think like 38 degrees Celsius is like 98 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's both the same level of temperature. It's just different numbers. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. So, so if you had, like I said, a, a thermometer, Fahrenheit on this side, Celsius on this side, the temperature would be the same, but the numbers are just different because it's different like units that they go off of. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's when it comes down to uh, the progesterone. That's where you get different numbers because you're using different machines, but essentially to make it simple and easy, you're doing progesterones to know when she's ready to be bred. You're doing reverse progesterones to know when the puppies are going to be born. And that's the most accurate way, in my opinion, to know when the puppy's going to be born to do a safe C-section. Okay. Okay. I yeah, can that's go on a, a tangent sometimes. <laughs> that's a real, that's a real science, man. God. Yeah. That's a real so, science, man. So I, I don't like to give set numbers and say like, oh, we like to do an AI at a 15 because that's what my machine reads at. For me, 13 to 18 is when I want to really do my AIs. But okay. your machine may be different and it reads off of different numbers. So to the person who just goes off of, well, oh, I heard him say he breeds at a 15, but your vet's machine may be different. So you got to go based off of the chart that you get with your machine or whoever's doing your progesterone and what their chart says. That's the best way to kind of explain that. Okay. Now, when it comes to um, to breeding, I know you do the, uh, the surgicals and, you know, the, uh, the TCI. Yeah, but... with the... Yeah, with the exotic bullies, um, a lot of people do surgicals. Believe it or not, we still keep it pretty old school. We really don't do surgicals like that over here. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, if I breed to a stud, though, like um, some studs, they require that you have to do a surgical, um, at least in the exotic bully world. And um, I've, I've had to do that. But I've always kind of had more luck and success with doing um, AIs. Okay. And, and in, my, in my opinion... And this is just my opinion. Unless there's an issue with like the stud semen or with the female, I don't I don't think it's really all that necessary, in my opinion. OK, now my next question. Have you ever had um, any dogs on your yard as far as with the exotics to uh, to natural top? Have you ever had any of them <laughs> to natural top? Uh, no, no, I've, I've never really had that happen. Um, it, it, it more than likely wouldn't either way because my dogs are always supervised. So if it's not me watching them, it's my wife. If it's not my wife, um, I, I have a helper that comes and helps take care of the dogs because it gets crazy. Okay. So yeah, um, that's very unlikely. And I mean, these dogs, the way they're built, it's, it's very unlikely that they would naturally tie the, the stud dog would probably get too tired and wouldn't bother before actually tying. They're too short. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's too short and, and they don't have enough drive. For it. Um, I I think I think they have enough drive for the for the the, the dog itself, but it it no, yeah, I'm saying as far as when it comes to the happening. like if it came to the uh the natural tie uh breeding. I, I think the, the problem is just that they wouldn't be able to mount. I don't think I don't think it'd okay. be able to be able to mount correctly and tie correctly. Okay. But I mean I could I mean I could be wrong, it could possibly happen. Yeah, I, you know, I just love asking these types yeah, of questions yeah. because a lot of people, you know, they want to know. Because, you know, yeah. when you go back to the the standard, you know, regular pit bulls and those yeah. big breeds like the like the Roddies and Dobermans, yeah. you know, you don't go and get no uh, no progesterone testing, yeah. not, no, re <laughs> no reverse progesterone. They just go yeah. with natural tie and then you count to 63 days. And then you yeah. got puppies. <laughs> so man, yeah. it's just it's just like with the with the bully, the bully world, man, it's it's so different, man. It's so it's yeah. artful and it's a science at the same time. Yep. In my it, in it, my opinion. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, and then like like for example, I had someone say, uh, well. Like we get C-sections, obviously, you know, our, our breed has to get C-sections. We're not the only breed though that has to do that. French bulldogs, English bulldogs. Um, and then like, you know, some people will say, well, if the dog can't naturally have puppies, then why, you know, should you be breeding it? And then, I mean, my thing to them is, well, 
thirty percent of women generally get C section. So I mean, that's true. You just gotta that's tell true. Them not to have babies. Very true. <laughs> that's yeah. very true. Very true. So very um, yeah, true. like I said, I I think if you can breed an exotic bully, an exotic because uh, you know there's exotic Frenchies and e- EBs as well. If you can breed these exotic versions, in my opinion, you could breed anything because I mean we have to go through all the hoops and and jump through all the circles in order to get these breedings done. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So anybody that's trying to get in contact with you that may, uh, you know, want to use one of your studs, you know, tell them how, how could they get in contact with you, man? And what's your stud yeah. feed going? Yeah. So um, right now you can contact us through YouTube, um, you know, through the comments. You can contact us through um, Instagram, DM. You can also uh, our phone number is on our website. Um, you can email us as well. Breedershacks at gmail dot com. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I think that's pretty much it. It's not too hard to get in contact with us. And um, as far as the studs go um, right now, actually, all of our studs are closed to the public right now. Um, with our new um, Angry Toy Bulls, we're actually very selective with how many slots we allow to the public. Okay. So, um, yeah, so each stud, um, we pretty much put it out there like, hey, they're open to X amount of lock-ins and they usually fill up pretty fast. So um, the next studs won't be available for lock-in until um, I think like 2023, end of this year. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, and try to, we, we, we aim really for like exclusivity with our blood, you know? Okay. Um, like I said, we'll limit the amount of breedings that the stud will be allowed to do for the year. I would say anywhere, depending on the stud, anywhere between it can be five to like 20 breedings and then that's it. You okay. Know, we don't try to oversaturate our blood. We try to keep it exclusive so that it also retains its value. You know, it becomes very desirable. And as well as the people who breed to our studs, um, now people are going to them and trying to purchase puppies for a high value amount because they know they can't come to us. Absolutely. Yeah. I know what you're saying. And man, y'all have some dope merch um, on y'all website too and some dope tools, that, you know, that's needed in the, oh, in the yeah. world, man. I definitely, yeah, definitely. Um, I ordered one of, the, one of the t-shirts off of them, man. Oh, I appreciate that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I definitely appreciate that. Um, yeah, we're working on doing more of the apparel right now. We have like the bullyology shirts and stuff like that. Um, uh, but yeah, we're definitely working on more of the apparel, but our website is definitely geared towards dog breeders, you know, any type of dog breeder. Like I said, I talked to poodle breeders. I talked to Jack Russell breeders. I talked to all types of breeders and, um, and we have everything on there. We have progesterone machines, nebulizers, yep, um, yep. supplements, all that kind of stuff. Um, as well as, and a lot of people don't realize, and I, t- I try to tell them, if you go on the website and you scroll down to the information center, I actually have articles with all my um, notes as far as like dosaging for deworming puppies, um, dosaging for heartworm, all, all articles uh, and, and my notes in the information center. That's right under um, the our supply store. So if you tap on that, it gets uploaded weekly with all our YouTube videos and then any kind of notes or website links are on there as well. Absolutely, man. I, I appreciate having you again on the show, man. I appreciate everything that you're doing, man. And congratulations on you know everything that y'all have going, man. Thank you. Thank you. And I mean, I appreciate you having me on. And and like I said, um, you know, uh, it, it's it's really an honor. And anytime you guys want, you know, any questions, hey, you guys can feel free to contact me, DM me, whatever. And um, that that's what I do. I mean, I, I help breeders pretty much every day, you know. Yes, sir. We hey, we definitely locked in now, man. I'm going to shoot you my number, too. Uh, I'm going to DM you my number. OK, sounds great. Sounds great. So, yes, yeah, sir. like I said, any any questions you, you guys may have or anything like that. You know, um, and when it comes to the dog breeding, I, I kind of been in every sector. I used to show dogs, you know, in the early, um, I would say like around uh, uh, maybe 20, 2015, somewhere around there. I was like showing dogs okay. for a good amount of time. So did that, then got into more of the reproductive side, all that stuff. So, hey, like I said, any questions y'all got, shoot them my way, you know. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you, man. This is another episode of Bully Talk with Will, man. No Thanks problem. for having Thank me, you. bro.